The operation of mooring a vessel has traditionally required the attendance of a large number of deck crew fore and aft. Supervision of the moorings was also necessary to maintain correct tension through changes due to the tides and the loading or unloading of cargo. The installation of self-tension mooring winches, which maintain tension and ropes through any rise and fall, has removed the need for constant attendance and equipment is available for tying up, which is designed for operation by as few as two men. Large container ships may have four mooring winches on the after deck, each of the self-tensioning type with its own rope drum. Controls are duplicated and are situated at each side of the vessel, giving a clear view of the operation. Mooring ropes are paid out directly from the drums as they are hauled by the heaving lines from the key. With the loop in place on the bollard, the capstan is set on auto-tension after slack is taken up and the ship is correctly moored. A common arrangement forward is for two similar winches plus rope drums for auto-tensioning on each windlass. The forces exerted on mooring equipment means that they have to be built into the vessel. They are placed in the way of under-deck girders and on thick plates. Clockwise from top left, these are, finger piers, a keyside or wharf, and a T-jetty at the bottom. We are not going to get deep into the mathematics of it here, but this diagram shows us, that when two parts of a mooring rope acting on a bollard, and those ropes make a 20 degrees angle at the bollard, and ropes each exert a force of 5 tons on the on the bollard the resultant force on the bollard is 9.848 tons. When two parts of a mooring rope acting on a bollard, and those ropes make a 40 degrees angle at the bollard, and ropes each exert a force of 5 tons on the on the bollard the resultant force on the bollard is 9.397 tons. So, the wider the angle at the bollard, the force on the bollard is reduced. The length of berth available for the vessel's length overall, should be known. If the vessel will have overhang at the berth, alternate means of securing the overhanging part of the vessel should be used. For example, using an anchor. The distance between the fenders affects the length of the vessels that can use the berth. Additionally, the condition of fenders should be noted and logged. Fenders in poor condition can damage paintwork on your vessel's hull leading to corrosion and possibly, the expense of early dry docking. The breaking load of any cordage that has a knot in it, is reduced by 50%. The ship's crew needs to know well in advance, what side alongside the vessel will be berthing. This is in order to prepare for mooring itself, as well as rigging the gangway, cargo and stores transfer. Mooring ropes are sometimes doubled up. This means the bite of the rope goes around the bollard on the jetty, and the eye of the mooring rope is placed around the bits on board. It is often possible to release this doubled up type of moor without the assistance of a linesman on the jetty. Stoppers are used to hold mooring ropes while they are transferred from the winch drum end to the bits. The cordage used for the West Country rope stopper should be 0.25, or 1 quarter, the diameter of the mooring lines. The cordage used for the single rope stopper should be 0.4, or a little less than half, the diameter of the mooring lines. The West Country rope stopper has two parts of rope crisscrossed over and under the mooring rope, and the ends held together. The West Country rope stopper is the preferred type of stopper because the friction grip on the mooring line is spread over more of the rope. The single rope stopper has most of the grip concentrated at the half hitch and there is much less friction than the more desirable West Country stopper. Maintaining the tension in the mooring line after it is removed from the drum end requires an effective stopper. Crew members should observe the condition of the berthing and mooring equipment ashore, as well as the work of the linesman to ensure is securely moored. Maintaining the tension in the mooring line after it is removed from the drum end requires an effective stopper. When turning up mooring ropes on twin bollard bits, a complete round turn should be made around one post, before turning up three or four figure of eight loops. When turning up wire ropes on twin bollard bits, it is advisable to lash the crosses of the top two or three eighths together, to prevent the wire from jumping off the bits. Double cruciform bits should be used as shown. The single cruciform bits is used as shown.